Nebraska. Um, so the scripture coming, so the first scripture we're really going to look at where this is built from really, is 1 Corinthians 15, 41. Um, so if you want to just, well, I'm just going to go to that in my Bible. 15, 41 says, There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. The stars differ from stars in glory. So this is just built upon, you know, in, in heaven, thereafter, we are, we are to be... There's, we're not just all in, we're not just one big mesh of, of something there. There is very significant differences between each of us. We see we see in revelations that the, you know, the elders are seated around the throne and there's many praise in thereafter. Well there's there's different degrees of glory in which we can all enter into. And you know, first I suppose I just want to expand a little bit on the word glory. Um, so this is a strong zone. I'm just gonna move the projector just slightly here because obviously not a lot. Um, so Strong's, you know, it's a, so Strong's number 1391, uh, glory, is kind of, you know, breaking down the meaning of the word glory, corresponds to the Hebrew word kobo, um, to be heavy. Both terms convey God's infinite intrinsic worth, substance, and essence. So this is just, you know, the meat of the word glory and, and, and what it kind of, what it, what it is supposed, what it means. Uh, and a little bit more there on glory. Glory relates to inherent value. So that's, you know, we say we give God the glory, we give God, we put God in his, in his righteous place, the value that we esteem to anything else in this world. Well, God is, God in himself is valuable, is glorious, and hence use, use of the glory of God, i.e. his substance, the essence of his internal, infinite being. God's glory encompasses all his attributes, so it's the Lord's, the, the Lord's infinite preciousness, substance, glory. Man's true worship, personal recognition, and adoration. So that's just God who He is. And we've got things like God's righteousness, God's wisdom, God's justice, God's peace. These are all part of characteristics. But all these kind of it's kind of like the car. Where, you know, you might look at the wheel somewhat, and it be only a wheel somewhat relating that to the to the wisdom of God. But the the, the glory is in the car in itself. So it's, it's in the, the car as a whole as opposed to just the individual parts. And that's what when we're saying, God, we give you the glory. We give you the glory for everything that you are, for all of you are, all encompassing. Uh, the glory is the splendor of his majesty and the omnipotence of his, the all-powerfulness of his interventions. So that's a uh, you know, theological lexicons, that's, uh, yeah, theological lexicon of the New Testament. So some scripture just to, to talk about this a little bit. I am the Lord, that is my name. I, I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise given to images. So God is not one to give away his glory as if we might give something to somebody and then they have it and then we can do what we want with it. God is very unique in that he allows us to share in his glory, but he doesn't, he doesn't give it to another. So we can, be, we can share in the glory of God and the majesty of him. But my glory gives to no other. So let's you know Isaiah there, you can see Isaiah 42, 8. Romans, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to, to be conformed to the image of his son. So that's about the sharing there, being conformed, being likened to the son. That he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Romans 8, 29, that kind of thing. The glory is God, the glory the glory is God in the splendor of his majesty and the omnipotence. I think I've repeated that one, excuse me. I'm in trouble with the this morning. So, just a little bit about what the glory is. You know, it's God in his whole essence. It's all of who he is. It's his, it's his entire being. I suppose I liken it to kind of, you know, as he's shining upon us, as, he, as he's sharing his glory in us, we're all kind of um, emanating some of the glory of God. We, you know, we're called to be conformed to the image of God. I liken it to the sun shining through on all of you today. You know, I can see I can see the reflection of your face, and I can see the glory that's in each and every one of you. Amen. But in essence, really, that is all. Is all that is is the glory of the sun shining on you and reflecting back. And you're giving me a little bit of the reflection of the sun, and you're portraying it in your individual way, seeing you and likewise, and so on and so forth. We're all just portraying the glory of. The light of the, the, the sun, because it's the sun that gives us light and illuminates things for us. So likewise, we should do that with God. Obviously, that's a physical example, 
But God is spirit and we should worship him with the spirit. So likewise, how we see the, 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 the shining of the sun of God in spirit in our lives, as we see that God shining in us, we should likewise reflect that out into the world. However we can, whatever, you know, in, in our Egypt, we're all going to do that to different degrees. Some may, some may you know, be tenacious in one thing and, and very subtle in another, or, or some may, you know, be people utterly at peace. You can see it on some people sometimes when they just seem a, a very peaceful person, but some are a little bit more erratic. They're all shedding, sharing different degrees, different, different characteristics of the glory that's being that's upon them. So we should really look within ourselves and and recognise what we are, what we are reflecting of the glory of God, and try to you know when we when we come to the scriptures, we see who God really is and what that perfectly reflects. Like we see that in Jesus Christ, what the perfection of the glory of God is, it, it shines like. So therefore, that's the kind of conforming to be like Jesus in each in our, in each in our own individual ways. So, you know, how do we reflect his glory? What, what kind of, what do we have to do to, to reflect his glory? So this is really just going to be talking about, I wanted to talk about kind of, you know, this is a general whole for everybody, for every Christian, for everybody that's born again, reflecting the glory of God. And then I'm just going to go through a couple of scriptures again, um, just to really walk through this a little bit. So from Romans 2, 7, to those who need to those who by patience in doing good, so that's seek the glory and honour of the immortality, he will give eternal life. So for everybody who, who is given the gift of faith, there's a gift of eternal life given to everybody. There's not, there's not a partial gifting, there's no purgatory in the scriptures, so we don't go with that. There's, it's everybody is given the gift of eternal life. But then my question to you really is, what is patience in doing good? What is it to do good by the will of God? And you know, I put that's that's I, I put the word in there by faith. It's because the things that we do good are, are the things that come from God. They're not things that we we're not doing it by works per se. We're doing it by hearing the voice of God and then going out and doing it. And again, there you go. You see there that how God will guide one person in one direction and another in another. But they are both doing. Hopefully, if God wills, the, the, His work, um, and that's how we, you know, that's how we're doing the good work God has God has called us to do by the faith in which He says to you to do. Now, there's a number of things which are universal for each and every one of us. You know, you, you look at all the commandments, you look at the, the laws given by Christ. So these things should come naturally. These, should, these things are very clear to each and every believer. But there's certain individual parts of faith that then there's a calling on your life and on your life, and on your life, and so on. There's individual callings in which you've got to listen to God, what are you saying, okay, I'm going to do that. And that's how we're going to reflect His glory. That's how we're going to show, give God the glory. Because we're putting away our own will and choosing God's. We're, and and that, that comes at a struggle, that comes at a, uh, you know, that, that comes to work, you've got to work that out a little bit. Each and every one of you, that comes through relationship with God. But you've got to find time to, to hear the voice of God, to do what he's calling you to do. So a little bit longer here. So another one, but resist him firm in your faith. No, so again, sorry, so, so in the brackets here, yeah, that's just another Strong's number there and the original and the, and the Greek wording for faith. Um, but resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same expectations of experiences of suffering are, are being accomplished by your brethren. Who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, inform, strengthen, and establish you. So again, we're just going to look at you know the calling to, to suffer for Christ. Now, now this is not necessarily this is not you know like necessarily a literal suffering, physical suffering, but when so when the scriptures clearly say to us, do good. And, and somebody's really riled you that day and, and everything in you is inclined to do something bad to that person. Well, the scriptures say, you know, be you bearers of peace, turn the other cheek. These are the things that we're doing by faith. These are things, this is a part of our suffering because God has called us how to be righteous, shown us how to be righteous, shown us how to be good. So this is, this is you know, people will say it's in the little things of faith. Well, these are the little things of faith. 
when when your when your when something like I mentioned somebody riling you or, or or choosing to be do good and you know choosing to be charitable as opposed to oh I'm struggling this week with some finances but I'll be charitable if I can see that person's in need and I'm not going to go hungry tonight. These little things are things of faith are part of our suffering. This comes from Peter and he's talking about a, 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 a a far deeper suffering somewhat, where the people were being seriously persecuted and thrown out and, and, uh, and you know, dispersed over the country. But even still, it's in the little things. So, you know, and, and all of these things, it's, it's Christ who perfects you at the end of it all. It's Christ who, who guides you and leads you on that path to perfection. But rejoice insofar as you share in Christ's suffering. So we all know the sufferings of Christ bearing our sins upon the cross. They're quite weighty sufferings. That you may be, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. <coughs> bit by bit God shows us little bits, little inklings and little, little revelations or, or, or depths of his glory in, in our personal time and we just know uh, that we know <coughs> the grace of God is and how glorious it is to be. And, but we should rejoice in all of our suffering. So it, it plays a little bit onto the previous one, uh, you know, that we should, we should seek to do good and, and be prepared to suffer for the sake of doing good, mm. as Christ has called us to do good. Again, it comes out of the scriptures. But you know if you're doing right or wrong by the word of God, because the word of God is true and everlasting. Everything else is really just fading away. Mm. Philippians here, 3, verses 20 to 21. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body, by the power that enables him even to subject all things under heaven. So, all things to himself. So we're talking about how, you know, what are the general glory that's given unto each and every one of us, those who are born again, those, those who are believers in Jesus. Christ, transform our lowly bodies to His, to be like His glorious body. Christ was, you know, Christ is, is all, He's all powerful, all present, all knowing. This is who Christ is, and He's going to transform our bodies to, to, to know so much more, to be, you know, as we, as we, our relationship draws nearer to Him, He's going to reveal more and more to us. And, you know, again, if we, if we look back to the suffering that I mentioned before, again, our eyes shouldn't be down here on earth, they should be up in heaven, they should be, this is, this is where, this, these are the things that, that matter, that are eternal, because the things down here are both perishing, we are like, you know, seeds of the ground, and all of this externally, our physical bodies are, 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 are to be seeds planted in the ground, because we are planted, sowing things, spiritual things, heavenly things, as opposed to sowing earthly things. And the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who hears, he who has ears, let him hear. In other words, hey, you know, this is just continuing to repeat about how the glory of each and every one of us shall be like the sun in the kingdom of the father. So now, uh, as mentioned in the opener here, release really, stars differ from stars in glory. Well, then, by that account, then, there's varying degrees of glory in which God is going to bestow on each and every one of us. And I just wanted to look into that and really give some of the, you know, highlight some of the texts that highlight some of that, um, that, that can, you know, hopefully encourage us to, to do what the Lord has called us to do individually. Of course, God knows where you're going to end up and where you started and how you're going to get there. God knows the beginning from the end. But we don't, that's a part of our humanity that we, we, we can only see so far. But how far God's called you to go, God knows. But it's up to you really to find out, because you can go as far as you want. But, you know, you're, you're only ever going to go as, as far as, you don't know how far God's called you to go. So if you just keep pressing in, you don't know, it could be further, it could be, it, it, no eyes seen or ear heard how, what, what God has prepared for you. So it could be so far, it could be so near to, when I say far, I mean so near to him. And God, who knows that you could be seated next to one of the twelve elders seated around the throne. You don't know that, you don't know that God hasn't got that prepared. You could press in 
But if you put away the childish things of this world and, and pick up the things of God that are eternal, then there's varying degrees in only God knows what you have in store, but you've got to find out. Each of us have got to find out. And that's an exciting thing to know, I think. To, 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 to declare that we can, we are traveling, this is a story for the fears. So, so again, so talking about the varying degrees, Matthew 5, 11 to 12. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you, persecute you, and falsely say all evil kinds to you. Folks, you say all kinds of evil against you because of me. I love this scripture, and I regularly preach it on the street. But I, I, it comforts me in the street. We don't get much persecution, but we get it, and it's funny. I find it funny. I do, I do, because I've seen it. I rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Why is it, who, whose reward is great in heaven? Those who are persecuted. Blessed are you, the, the people who insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because, because of me. Rejoice in the God, for your reward is in heaven, for your reward in heaven is great. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Praise God for the, for the, for the persecution that comes. Because our name, that, just, that's just a, that is just a sign of the seal of your name in heaven. So don't worry about it. We get it a lot. We, I get it a lot where I am. I'm sure you, you know, you're all in your own little bits. It's people, just, it can just be a slight mocking. But rejoice in that. There, 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 there's humanity that takes over for a second that says, oh, I'm just scum of this office. <laughs> or, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I feel so small around these people. Your reward is in heaven is great. Just have that in mind because... Jesus' name is worthy to be praised. We were praying, we were singing it a lot earlier. Your name is your name is worthy. You are worthy. And that is a I think is a fantastic story. Matthew 16 to 20, 16, 27. Amen. For the Son of Man is going to come, hallelujah. Hallelujah. With his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Amen. What have you done for the Lord? What have you done? What have you done? What have you done? He will repay you according to your work. Sometimes this is preached against, you know, the people that aren't in the Lord, and you know, you're going to suffer as we're going to be praised as much as we're worthy to be praised. He is going to give us according to what we have done, and so therefore, let's do more for God and do more for what He's calling us to do, because. One, he'll sustain you along the way. He'll, he'll build you up along the way. He won't let you go, oh, you know, my grace. Paul is praying, but, you know, remove this form from my side. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. And Paul knows it really in his heart. First, although it was hard, although it's tough, we can, we, you know, do all that I do to stand. And I stand, I keep going, I don't stop purely because we know in our hearts that, I guess maybe that's a part of the internal stuff. We know that we can keep carrying on. Because internally we know in our spirit is kicking and saying, He will repay each person according to the work that he's done. So we've just got to keep going then. Keep working out what God is calling us to do. There's a great reward in heaven. And and it's only for us to find out really what that is. You know, we're not there. This, I don't look at life as if there's a period now that I'm alive and then I'm moving into heaven when I'm eternally alive. He says, those who are in me shall not second the second death. So right now we're living in eternity. Right now we're living, this is just a place. So right now our bodies will just, will be, we will just, you know, be translated into the, into the you know, our, our bodies will die, but our spirits will remain alive for eternity. So, so right here, the time is now to continue to do what the Lord is calling you to do. It's not a case of, you know, working out, you know, we're working it out, out along the way, but let's just, be who God has called us to be today. So be, you know, be sure to make sure you know what God is really calling you to do. Pressing in, asking Him what it is you want me to do, how it is you want me to show your glory. Because we are, like, as I mentioned, with the with the sun shining through and reflecting each of your, you know, images, your glories. Was likewise, how is God asking you to shine His glory into? into whatever social circles we each, we each are within. 
So first Corinthians, so another verse, first Corinthians three verses eight. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labour. So again we just see that there is a varying degree of glory. Each will according to his labour, according to what you put in. God will bring forth that. You know, the, the scripture, other scriptures will say the labourer deserves his wages. Do not muzzle the ox. There, there's various scriptures that, that, that strengthen this, but I've just given this one. That you will receive your wages according to your work. So, is that a question? Yes. Also, the Lord is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek him. So, diligently seek him. That comes back to the seeking and then doing. You know, go in and out. The sheep come in and out by the way of Jesus. And let's go in for it, work out what he wants and go out into the world and declare him. 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6. The point is this whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Amen. We're laying up our treasures in heaven. We're sowing on earth and reaping in heaven. So, you know, the, the scriptures speak for themselves, really, I think. It's immensely clear as to, as to really what they're getting at. You know, let's, so, you know, I, I spoke on the, on the previous, what is it to be glorious? Well, it's, it's about doing the will of God. It's about listening in faith. Well, then we've got to take that, apply it to these, these, these scriptures here, so, you know, so sparingly you will reap sparingly. Bountiful you will reap bountiful. Daniel. Mm -hmm. And those who are wise shine like the sun. Shine. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above. And those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Mm. Mm. Itself again, you know, it's very clear that I think that's the, the second part. And those who turn many to righteous, like the stars forever and ever. Again, it just that this is written in Daniel, but this is just a great commission that Jesus has called us all to go spread the gospel, make disciples of all nations. God wants us to be more glorified in Him. And that's why he's told it here. That's why he commissioned it when, he, when Jesus did as Jesus was walking. Because they are like the stars forever and ever. So we praise God for his, for his counsel in the scriptures there. But the mission there is to turn many to Jesus. Mm. And, uh, and into an inheritance that can never perish, soil or fade, this inheritance is kept in the view. I think I've got that. I think we'll just go to the first Peter four. First Peter. It's, it, it's first Peter one. You can see it. Can you see it there? Yeah. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, this inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you have been, you have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proving genuineness of your faith of greater worth, yeah. of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though it is refined by fire, may, may result in praise, glory, honour when Jesus Christ is revealed. Um, so there again, First Peter, First Peter one really just really talks about our faith is like our, our righteousness. We just get in the scriptures.
For an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for, for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, little while if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the testing, tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The longer you burn gold, the more it's going to, you know, the more of the impurities are going to be burnt out. <clears throat> the hotter it burns, the quicker the, you know, it's going to get, it's going to purify the gold more and more until it's just pure gold. The trials and tribulations, the testings that we each of us individually face. God, turn it up. Turn it up that I, that I may be refined even more. It's, you, you might be in, you might be, there might be a weight upon you at that point, but God, I trust in you. I put all my trust in you. You're going to uphold me. If you, if you hold fast to that truth that the, the word of God stands true forever and he shall never let you perish or fade away and everything that is of any value is held in heaven for you incorruptible and unfiled, well, God, turn up the heat on us. Turn up the heat on this place individually, on me. I don't know. I don't know if you want to say that. I don't know if you want to say that. Because you ask God and he tends to I mean, get it. Ask and you shall receive. But you understand the point. If we really want to be refined, we've got to accept that there's going to be some tribulation, there's going to be some trials, there's going to be some persecution, there's going to be some stuff come our way that we are not comfortable with. But if you're doing things in faith, no, if, you, if you're doing nonsense, then, then go into destruction. But if you're not doing nonsense and you're doing the will of God, found in the word of God, if you're doing this and the persecution comes, if you're doing this and the trial comes, praise God for it because it's refining you as God is calling you to be refined. And in everything you suffer here, there is, a, you know, Jesus suffered the cross and you know, he was willing to die and put it upon the cross for what lay before him. He knew that heaven lay before him. And as we have an assurance because the word of God is true, we know that heaven lays before us. And therefore be willing to suffer as Christ suffered. And finally, I just want to go into the final verse, Ecclesiastes 2, 14. For God will bring every act to judgment. Everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. Now, we thank God that he has paid for our evil deed, for our sins. We thank God that as far as the east is from the west, he's removed our evil deeds from us in his sight. Some of us may, you know, some of us, if you're in prison or something like that, they, they, there's justice in this land, we thank God for that. But moving on to the bigger, you know, the, the more weightier matter here, he's going to repay you for every good, every faithful, deed you do. Because what is good is good with God, so therefore we do things in faith from God. So every good deed that you do, God will repay you. And he's a righteous God and he will, you know, exactly he's, he's going to be true to every act that you do. So you know, the scriptures also speak about do not be like the Pharisees who go out and expect the praises of men. But do it to you, do it yourself. Do, in charitable deeds do not show what the left, do not let the right hand know what the left is doing. In everything that we do, God sees us. God sees every bit of it. God knows every bit of our heart. And, and he's going to judge us whether it is good or evil. And, you know, for the evil acts, we thank, we thank Jesus. But we, we strive to do what is good every day of our life. So you know, all, of this, all of this really stems from getting to know who Christ is through the scriptures. Now, you, you, you will read it in the Gospels, you'll read it in, you know, in all the letters thereafter, but you see it in, a, in an abundance through the Old Testament as well, so don't neglect either of them, because they both show, you know, the Old Testament is a foreshadowing really of the coming Christ and the judgment thereafter, but then the New Testament really makes it quite clear as to who Christ is. You know, we see him walking on earth, so we see him in, as in man, as we are, men and women, and, and therefore we should strive to do likewise, um, but knowing, again, that our treasures are in heaven. Um, so I hope that, you know, has given you some sort of insight there into, 
and to that our, our, you know, that we are to glorify God in all that we do. We pray this, we, we sing this, and and hopefully that gives you a little bit of um, substance there as to what it means. And I know it even more so that we can press in individually. It's, a, it's an individual race. You know, no runners run together. They shouldn't be there. We're not going to run in circles. We're going and striving towards God. So therefore, it's impressive. You know, find out what God's got for each and every one of us. I suppose I say this at a, a timely time for you, you two yourselves. You know, you're leaving us here at this church. But God's got a mission for each, each of you. God says, I know the plans. So there's a plan for you. I know the plans that I have for you. Um, therefore, take that and know that the deeper you go with God, there's always a little bit more. Deep cool down to deep, so there's more to be revealed to you. Um, and I just you know, pray a blessing over you. I think we'll continue to pray for you in this church as, as you go on. But um, yeah, praise God and find out the glory that He has for you. Amen. Amen. Amen.